me as hard as I could in the chest. My lungs are on fire. I'm crying. And I'm going, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Hot rubbers hitting me and everything else. And I go, I've never done drugs, but this is what a hit's got to feel like right here. Yes, it does, because you get a, you get, you get this sucked into it. And I tell people all the time, if you come to an NHRA trade million drag race, and you go there for your first time, it will hook you like a big mouth bass on a large yeah. brother. It, and, and you're hooked, and you got to come back, and you bring other people back. And I think that's just the synergy of our sport in general on what it does to you. And it, it hooked me as a young kid. My dad, uncle, and family used to bring me out to the drag races when I was a young kid, and I just got hooked into the sport. And I've never looked back. And, and to this day, I'm, I'm just addicted to it, brother. I just can't get enough. And that's what drives me. And that's the passion behind my force of just – just keep on diving in the sport and growing inside the sport and becoming a part of it. Yeah. Now you got your kids hooked into it, man. It's like the whole family affair, right? Bro, I, I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing. <laughs> you know, hey, imagine this. You come home and whether you have a good weekend or a bad weekend, your kids are picking out what you did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dad, yeah, you won the race, man, but what about that slack luster light that you had, that lack luster light you had in the second round? Oh. Come on. I could do better than that with my eyes closed. <laughs> uh, kids are throwing That's shade, dude. I walk through the door. <laughs> oh, man, you got critics at home now. You can't go home and hide, dude. I, I feel oh. bad for you. <laughs> oh. No, man, but that, that's just the way our family is. We're highly competitive, and um, all my kids, my daughter being the oldest, she's 18, and uh, my son Anson's 15, and my youngest Adler is 11. Where they just they've been drag racing in the Midwest Junior Super Series Drag Racing Association here in the Midwest, which is under it's like you know NHRA sanction at all the NHRA racetracks. And uh, they've been racing in that since like my son Anson started when he, as soon as he could at eight years old. And then when they dropped the age limit, my son Adler started when he was six. So with that being said, it's just all a part of it where they're all a part of it and uh they like it they love it and and you know it's a life building experience because they learned at an early age that everybody's not a winner you know what i mean you got to put the work in to get the results on the weekend and i have the and i have them working hard monday through thursday or monday through friday during the week honing their skills on simulators and reaction time deals where at the end of the day we come out and we perform on the weekend, and my kids could see the growth on how much better they got by doing it. Yeah. Well, you know, and I think, too, like I, I, we've seen this in off-road. When I started out, there was, you know, there, there was no such thing as 8-year-old kids racing or 6-year-old kids racing. Like, you had to wait until you were 17, 18 before you actually could kind of go out and start racing and stuff like that. And now we've seen this whole crop of young drivers who are 18 years old and just killing it. And I got to think NHRA is the same way. Like, you know, you, I don't want to say we got a late start. We just got the start that normally guys our age back then – had when you got into racing you know but now these kids like you know there's 15 year old kids and i'm looking at them going how are you this talented it's got to be the same thing with drag racing you're looking at some of these kids and going man these kids are by the time they're 21 they're just going to be killing it absolutely because the thing about this is that we have already saw it jim i'm being completely honest with you brother we saw it uh we have kids that come out of our like matt sackman that's on my on my drag racing team he's our he's our uh short block engine builder guy on our race team. Uh, he's 20. I think Matt now is like 25 years old. And the craziest part of it is he's been on our team. And I saw this kid go from junior drag to racer to working on our race team to going straight into racing top dragster, winning on that level, and then jumping into a, a fuel alcohol dragster and went on that level with the Randy Myers team. So, and then you see other people that came out of our sport, like Devin Eisenhower. His first year out, he goes out and goes from junior dragsters right into Super Comp and Super Gas. And he won the Super Gas World Championship in NHRA drag racing across the country. I mean, it blows your mind on what these kids learn at an early age. And they're racing at that level as a kid, and they jump right to the big leagues, and they hop in with no fear. They happen with no fear in attack mode, and they make it happen. And that's, and that's the thing that I want to capitalize on. I get to see some of this young talent like that, like Matt, Devin, or like a Megan Meyer, people of that nature, where you can actually pull them up to the big ranks and give them an opportunity 
in the seat of a fuel car or a funny car and, and bring them into our sport so our sport can grow at that level and bring the young kids into our sport and, and show them what they can do. Well, and I think that's kind of your vision, you know, because – you and I both know, like, you, you know, you've, you, you're you going to be able to race top fuel as long as you want to race top fuel, you know, and, and uh, we've got guys like John Forrest, you know, the guy's still winning races, and he's been around for, for decades, you know, and, and he, there's, he's not, you know, he's not pulling up anytime soon or pulling out, but a guy like you, you're looking at things, and, you know, we've seen Force do it, and we've seen DSR do it, but you're looking to grow the future, you know what I mean, I mean give opportunities to some of this talent, and I think that's what separates you from everybody else, is you've got this vision. It's not about you, it's also about the, the bigger picture of the entire sport in general and keeping it healthy for generations to come and not just right now well for sure because at the end of the day what do you have like you know you had other predecessors used to be in our sport like you had kenny bernstein he's out who took over you get what i mean you had don steak perdone he had mega teams before he's out who took over you get what i mean and then don schumacher came in mega teams like you know what i mean one day Don. You know, one day when Don ever decides to hang, like to hang up the cake because he's, he's a super team owner, you know what I mean? Yeah. Who's next? Who's next to keep? Who's next to keep it going? Who's next to keep the sport growing? You get what I mean? Who's next after John Force hangs up his cape? Another super team owner. Who's next after Connie Coletta hangs up his cape? Probably Doug is. Doug, Doug is going to take it over because I know I think he's talked about. His son Mitch having uh, interest in in racing also. You get what I mean. Yeah. So you have other people there, but you got to have other things that's going to keep this sport growing and going. And who's next in line? You know what I mean. And and that's something that we always talk about. But it's just not talking about it. Who's going to be about it? And uh, and it's something that I always love. And this sport is my life. You know what I mean. So that's what I got to make the most of it and and make that move. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about 2020, buddy, because uh, we got Phoenix coming up. We got uh, Pomona in the books, and I know uh, Phoenix. Uh, Would you have a little, little, little shake action going on right off the, uh, right off the get go? What uh, take us through? Uh, I guess what we're looking at for 2020, man, because I know obviously the season didn't start out the way you wanted it to. No, I mean the, the, the track was stellar, and we haven't tested in those type of conditions and. In first round, the funny car in top fuel, I only think like three cars made it down without pedaling in both classes. And, of course, I was one of the cars that didn't make it down, and, my other, and the other car I raced just made it down better than we did to get the win. So uh, our hats are off to them. And the thing about it is it's just the start of the season for us. But I have a great deal of confidence where I feel in my own personal heart that I have my own personal dream team back in place with, with Brian Karate, Mark Oswald, you got Brad, Kyle, and the rest of all of our other boys there. Matt, you know, Diggy D, Chris, uh, Tyler, uh, Aaron. And uh, we just got so many great people on our team right now that I just think that you're just going to see our team just, just start growing. And, uh, and once we start getting our, our feet underneath of us and we get everything working right, we're going to be right there in the championship contending form because I feel that I have the best of the best. And uh, it's just going to be a matter of time of getting everybody back in unison and getting everybody in that symmetry. And we're going to be that championship contending team like we were for years past in the prior years where we won three championships. We always finished, and uh, we won almost six races each and every year or more. And uh, we're going to be right back to that this year, and I feel it in my heart. And Lord knows that we're just going to put the work in and, and make it happen. Yeah. Well, here's a question too. Do you? I know NHRA made uh, made some changes to uh, to the countdown, kind of the the way people qualify in this year. You feel like with this new one, we know where you're going to show up to all the rounds. I mean, do you feel like uh, maybe a little bit of pressure's lifted off to make that countdown, or do you still, you know, I mean, obviously you're there to win every single weekend, but do you feel like you have a, a, a you know around or a, an event like you had there in Pomona where it just just didn't work out in your favor. That happens, right? Do you feel like, yeah, we still got a shot at a uh, shot at this thing. Cause we know we're probably going to be a lock into the countdown. Yeah. You know, I, I never even looked at it that way because the, our, our team's like mental state and mentality is, is not even worrying about just making the countdown. Our goal is to go in, in the top three every year into the countdown. 
And last year we did it. We did it the year before. Last year we went in number three. We were number two all the way through like the middle of the season to the countdown, almost the countdown started. And Dougie flip-flopped us and we went in third. And then we didn't race the countdown to the best of our ability. And we, like, I mean, we had a bad countdown last year. We ended up ninth. But besides that, we were right there with everybody else going tick for tat, going, going to rounds and doing what we need to do to be competitive through the whole year. And, and we've done that. But our main focus is not to worry about to say, okay, well, we got to wait left it off. All we got to do is show back the races we're in the countdown. That's, that's, not, that's not our, mind, our mindset. Our mindset is to go out there and compete at a high level, win races, and then the rest of it takes care of itself. And if you do that, you can go in number one. And, and, and that's and that's the ultimate game plan. Yeah. Well, we got to talk real quick about top fuel too, because you know I'm just looking at this, and I don't know if there's been in the history of the sport a more stacked top fuel grid. I mean, you guys don't have. There's no easy bracket, man. I mean, I'm just looking down here, and you got your two teammates. I mean, you know, I just I'm looking at this going, AB. It doesn't matter where you qualify; it's not going to be easy. Oh, it's never easy where you qualify it. Now you got a lot of teams running hard and running strong. And when you look at just Pomona, for example, I think Brittany Force qualified number one at 65. Number nine was like a 72 or something like that. And then like like the, that's the whole thing is, is that the whole field is only separated normally by like 800. So number one can be taken out by the number 16 qualifier if you have any kind of hiccup or mess up or mistake. So going into this year, there's no give me. So you want to qualify strong and you can't take anybody lightly. And I think that's what raises the level of our game. That's what makes our racing so exciting now is that the competition level has uh, risen to an all new level. And when you win a race, it's like winning a championship inside itself. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think it puts it in perspective when a guy like you, you know what I mean, who is, you know, I think everybody by and large is going to consider you one of the top dogs in top fuel. I mean, no doubt. And when you get knocked out in the first round, I think it, it, it kind of makes everybody take a step back and go, man, this is some real competition here when a guy like AB, for whatever reason, doesn't make it out of the first round. I think that's a credit to the NHRA and what they've built and all the teams and drivers. And I think that's what has got everybody so damn excited about NHRA right now and top fuel and funny car. And well, I mean, pro stock you can talk bikes you can talk everything it's just man there's no easy brackets in any division and that me as a fan ab that's what's got me tuned in every single weekend for sure jim for sure and and that's the thing is that what makes everything exciting and intense is because it's unknown you get what i mean yeah. it's not a give me for anybody to win anything or to go rounds or to win races is that i mean you could be the dominant car and you could lose first round. We've seen it happen over and over again. It doesn't make a difference. It's like you have to have all your stuff lined up. And sometimes you got to be in the right spot at the right time too. You know what I mean? To take advantage of it. So it depends on which way you qualify. And the main thing is having the car that goes down the track each and every time. That's how you win races. And that's how you win championships. And I, and I speak on it because that's how we've done it in the past. Yeah. Well, you talk about driving the car, and you know, I one thing that's always blown my mind, and uh, being around it, seeing the in-car footage of what you guys go through, you know, sitting in a car and and kind of looking. I mean, I don't think people quite understand in that three to four seconds what actually happens in that car because you're working, dude. It's not like you're hitting the gas and just holding it straight. I mean, there's a lot of driving that goes on, and I don't think people really realize that. One, you know, just the pressures you're being put under with the G-forces and the hits. But two, I mean, you know, you guys are working. It's not holding the wheel straight. You guys are seesawing back and forth. I mean, there's so much that goes on in that three to four seconds. And I think, like, the casual fan, I don't think they realize how much driving is actually happening behind the wheel of a top fuel or a funny car. No, they don't. And, uh, and the crazy part is I didn't realize it myself, Jim. Shoot, <laughs> we had an in-car camera one time. I said, I'm staring at Joker. You see how many times I'm staring? I'm turning that wheel left and right in a straight line, and you don't realize how much you're staring it for 3.7 seconds. Like, you just don't hold it straight. You're actually, like, tweaking it because the back end of the car is trying to do everything but go straight because one tire gets more traction than the other, and that's the way the car wants to drive. 
So you're just trying to guide it 